Well, an activist investor in the commercial real estate space has a new warning out today. He says the hurricane is spreading to an area many have considered a safe haven, medical labs. And there's one company he says may be right in the eye of the storm. Jonathan Litt is behind the call. He's the chief investment officer at Land and Buildings. Jonathan, welcome back. Great to have you with us. Um, let's get straight to this name. It's a fascinating report. It is? Alexandria Real Estate. Okay. And Thank you did a study of 495 buildings. Right. So the last time I was here, we were in process, or I would have chatted about it. Uh, we know office is bad. People are not returning to the office. This company operates office lab space. And most people thought the stock was insulated from work from home. Uh, and the stock is trading at a very substantial premium. It's cheaper than it was, but it was a, a premium. And we said, well, maybe we should buy it down here. Uh, and then we started researching it. Uh, and everything was lining up, and the company's saying everybody's back. Uh, and we had been using the cell phone data. I think I talked about it last time for Six Flags. Uh, we said, let's take a look at the buildings using the cell phone data. And we did 20 buildings, down 50% on attendance. So we did another 20. And I said, you know what? Do every building. Uh, and we did every building. It took, you know, a month or so. And it's down 50%. Across the board. Across the, the company's portfolio. Their largest market, which is Boston, is down 56%. This is going the way of office, and it trades at a massive premium to office. Uh, I think it's going to be a real challenge. If you're Pfizer or Eli Lilly or Bristol Meyer, when those leases come up, you don't need it. People are working from home. All this important research we're doing, people are doing it from home. All the administrative people, they're doing it from home. They'll go to the lab for a few hours a day, uh, but then they go home and finish up their work. Is there, um, how do you think about the leases in terms of, is there a, a time, is there a common, I don't know if they're like vintages for <laughs> years in which a lot of the leases will come due? Where, where it's really yeah, so they have about 20% over the next several years and then it just continues to grow. You know, I'll just digress for a moment. So Blackstone owns a large portfolio called Biomed. Uh, John Gray was commenting on this uh, about two weeks ago and he said, look, vacancies are going to tick up and rents are going to be softer. Um, I agree with that. I think it's a little bit of an understatement. I think it's going to be much worse than that. Biomed, we did look at their buildings as well. Biomed's buildings, um, they did a better job underwriting them, and they're not as uh, badly hit as Alexandria's. Uh, but Alexandria's got a real problem. They've also got a lot under construction, right? So there's like a pipeline coming to the market in terms of lab space that will be available, which will make it even worse. I mean, I would think that lab space is more expensive to build out. Correct. So there's about 20% new supply coming to market, uh, which is on top of what's likely increasing vacancy as people shrink their footprint. I think I talked last time in Washington, D.C., people are shrinking the footprints uh, by, uh, by about 30%. Uh, so you're going to have supply from shrinking footprints, supply from new construction. And the reality is when we looked at Alexandria, um, their average rents are around 50 bucks. That's really not lab rents. Lab rents are like 100 bucks. Uh, and so this new construction... Maybe they're going to get 100, but at 50 bucks, you got no competitive advantage in the space that you have. I'm getting into the weeds here a little bit. I apologize for that, but I think it's going to be a real struggle. Um, but just to be clear, you are short the stock now. We are short. Um, have you been building up the short position? We have. Originally, we started thinking it was going to be a long. Uh -huh. uh, and then as we got into the cell phone data, and the cell phone data, I don't know how much you guys are hearing about it <laughs> on the show, but it's fascinating, and I think more and more people are going to use it. It's just uh, remarkable. Oh, I think what's interesting in, in terms of how you use it is that you took a look at minimum 60 minutes in the building to eliminate, like, some guy delivering a package. Correct. Or, you know, a visitor to the building. You really want to know who is working in the building. So Yeah, that, and they have this data which uh, shows how long people that are there for more than 60 minutes, how long are they there, uh, how long is their cell phone there? And it's like 350 minutes. So it's not even an eight-hour day or a 10-hour right. day, right? They're in, they're out, they go back home. It's, it's really interesting. Maybe we bury the lead on this one, Jonathan. It's my fault, but you see downside uh, to Alexandria as much as 40%. That's correct. For this to be valued where office is valued, it's going to be down 30 to 40. And what's interesting, I was just before the show talking to a banker about a variety of things, and I said, did you know this about lab space? He said, I had no idea. He goes, I'm going to go see if we have credit out to them. Uh, because he's concerned, right, if they're in the line of credit, uh, what's going to happen. And so I think you're going to start seeing financing for this space get quite tight. Um, while we have you here, we've been hearing more and more reports about um, property owners abandoning their properties in San Francisco, Westfield Mall, for instance. You know, they're handing back the keys. They don't want it anymore. They don't want to operate. 
Um, and I'm wondering if if there is more pain to come in a city like San Francisco, and are there ways that you are participating in that sort of decline? We've avoided it. Okay. We, we haven't, you know, we're short office, which is right. there. Uh, in uh, another company, Park Hotels, gave back uh, 3,000 rooms in two hotels. Uh, and uh, we looked at the cell phone data. It's down 50 percent, the number of people in those properties. Again, you look at a traditional hotels, we're off maybe five uh, outside of San Fran. San Fran's got a real problem in the office, in the lab space, in the hotels. The mall that was handed back uh, last week, I think it was, uh, was down 42 percent uh, in terms of people in the space. Uh, and I don't know what gets people back, because people commute into San Francisco, and with work from home policies, they're not. And in fact, I didn't realize this, 7 percent decline in the population in San Francisco. I mean, you think about New York, we're not down that much. Most you know, major markets are not down that much. It's a real problem for San Francisco.